I've just finished reading this book, which is If Cats Disappeared From The World by Genki Karamura, and I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars in the end, because um, some of the writing style was just a bit overly simplistic, and I think, you know, it sometimes it read like you're reading a story from a 16-year-old who thought they were more funny than they actually are. Um, so there were a few bits in there that, the way it was written, I was just a bit like, oh, that's, that's not great, but the idea behind it and the story that was being told um, was really powerful, and the book itself did have its moments of strong emotional poignancy, which I actually really enjoyed, and I was reading at a coffee shop at one point, and um, I just felt a little bit, <laughs> a little bit like I was going to cry, because um, it is quite a sad story. The story is about a 30-year-old man who um, realises that he has a brain tumour and is about to die, so um, he then gets um, greeted by the devil, who offers him a proposal that he can extend his life for one more day, um, but something has to disappear from the world. Um, so we follow him for a week, and on each day, a uh, different thing disappears from the world, because he wants to live one day longer, and it's sort of like a reflection on each thing that disappears from the world, based on how he's like kind of linked that object, or that thing, with um, a memory of a person. And so with each, each thing that disappears, we are also reflecting with him on a person based around that object, and I thought it was a really interesting um, topic. Now, I did request this book from Picador um, because I had actually watched the film a few years ago when it came out in Hong Kong, and um, I was still fascinated by the idea, and I wondered if the book would be better, but both the film and the book kind of weren't as strong as I felt they could be. So. Due to that book, I've sort of been reflecting on that idea and that concept, and I wanted to make a sort of speculative um, literary reflection, um, thinking on if certain things disappeared from the world, what would that world be like, and what would, what sort of books might I not be able to read? <laughs> So, what if bookshops disappeared from the world? Well, first of all, um, I wouldn't be having a part-time job right now. That's that's one thing that would go with that. Um, but also, it would it would make you question if bookshops themselves disappeared from the world. Would books also disappear from the world? Would would there be no space for us to be able to access books? Um, would a library exist if bookshops didn't exist? Because how would books as commodities make money, um, and how would that be a viable thing to then continue creating for consumption? Um, so, you know, that's a interesting, interesting speculation. What would happen if bookshops disappeared from the world? But I wanted to use this sort of topic to look at one book that I recently bought, which is Bookshops by Jorge Carrion. Um, and this book is sort of like a travel memoir um, about uh, Carrion as he goes through across the world and into different bookshops, and he kind of reflects on the meaning of bookshops, and he reflects on how different bookshops, I guess, um, deliver their services in different ways across the world, and how ultimately we are all kind of brought together through books and ultimately bookshops. So I'm quite excited to read this book, um, and I think it's a topic that I think is very close to a lot of um, sort of readers' hearts, because, you know, we do all love a good bookshop if we can get to, if we can get to one, if we can, like, have, afford to peruse and purchase from one. Um, we do enjoy that feeling, and it does give you a very specific feeling, so without bookshops, it would be <laughs> really sad, at least I, I, I think so, because I don't often shop in many other kinds of shops, um, except for of course the supermarket where there's food, but um, yeah, it, there, there is a very different experience about going into a bookshop and sort of just being surrounded by books and the smell, and if I didn't have, and if bookshops didn't exist, and this book didn't exist, I, it would kind of make me feel a lot less connected with other bookish people, you know, there's, there's a certain feeling about a space, particularly like a physical space, that does connect people, that does, even though you don't actually ever meet that person, you still have once crossed paths and you still 
walked the same floor, which I think is a very meaningful and very beautiful um, idea and something that would be very sad without. And I don't know whether it would be worth kind of extending your life for a world without bookshops, um, particularly if you consider how many other people really value bookshops. And then I was thinking, well, what if culture disappeared from the world? Now that's a really interesting thing because culture is kind of, well, it can mean lots of different things to lots of different people and there's never really a definitive term. But if you imagine that groups of people sort of create a culture by the way that they behave, the way that they do things and the way that they pass traditions on further down the line, um, that as one way of defining a sort of a culture. So if that disappeared, would would humanity disappear? Would that, would being a human kind of com be completely different? Would, is culture something that is inherently part of being a sentient um, human with with ideas and thoughts and imagination and ways of creating things and being things and doing things. Um, so without culture, what would we be? Would we still be who we are today? But it does also make you wonder, um, perhaps not necessarily if culture disappeared, but if cultures disappeared. And as we are becoming more and more connected online, um, there is almost the opportunity for us to be slipping further and further into a global culture and you know what does a global culture mean and what what would we lose or what would we benefit from having a homogenized global culture um and it is a global culture a real thing or is it simply an american culture perhaps so then if culture did disappear from the world um i kind of was thinking about this book, I wouldn't be able to read The Lies That Bind Us by Kwame Anthony Appiah. Now, this book is a sort of non-fiction treatise on what it means to have an identity, and it, I think it tackles some really big topics um, about cultural identity, but just sort of how like class and nationhood and um, the colour of your skin can define or redefine your identity consistently. So I'm, I'm very much interested. Now Apaya um, is a professor of ethics I think, so I think that sort of ethical look at identity is going to be a really interesting topic. So you know, without culture, if culture did disappear from the world and we didn't have books like this to actually make us examine what it means to be human and what it means to have a personal identity and what it means that that a culture doesn't always have to affect who you are and the way that you enact culture doesn't necessarily define you as um, your your personhood. So you know, I wouldn't be able to read this without culture and I don't think the world would be as fun a place or as exciting a place. It would just be a completely different world. So then what if travelling disappeared from the world? What if we all lost the ability to travel? Now, for some people this won't change anything because not everyone can travel, not everyone can afford to travel, um, not everyone has the physical ability to travel, um, but you know, they could be travelling in lots of different ways. If travelling disappeared from the world, would that necessarily mean travelling to different countries? Would it also mean travelling within your own country or travelling down the street? Um, would it mean that we would all lose the ability to walk? Or would it also mean that we would lose the ability to know about history because do words travel? Do words travel from an historic document to where we are today, to how we learn what we what we learned about? Um, would we be able to access archaeological sites if we didn't have travel? So that got me thinking about this book, which is Lost Japan by Alex Kerr. Now, this book was a funny book because it came into the shop one day and I was like, oh, this looks really interesting. And I put it on the shelf and somebody bought it straight away. Um, and they were saying how it's one of the best books they've ever read and how even people in Japan would kind of recommend this book as a, a great way for Westerners to learn about Japanese um, history, Japanese culture and Japanese travel. So it is a piece of travel writing and it is from um, Alex Kerr's experience of, experiences of witnessing Japan sort of 
changing um, from like a sort of place of history and a place of natural beauty into the sort of modernized world that it is today. So without, without travel in the world, if traveling did disappear, we wouldn't be able to learn about places and we wouldn't learn, be able to learn about histories of places and we wouldn't even be able to learn about the people from those places. It would make us so confined to very specific spots and we, our knowledge of everything around us would be so very different and sometimes it's so, so vital to learn. Um, even if you can't now travel there are ways of traveling through literature which really help you learn about different places and learn about different people and cultures and kind of broaden your sense of understanding of the the world that we inhabit and the places that we do live um which i think is a really beautiful thing and if i weren't able to read this book you know and i weren't able to have my own experiences of japan it would be well i mean i guess i wouldn't know any different but it would just be so very disheartening to know that, you know, you'd feel so isolated and so alone in the world, which isn't a nice feeling, really. So what if translation disappeared from the world? What would we lose by losing translation? Um, you know, we would lose access to so many different scripts and so many different writings across the world. We would lose access to so many different ideas and so, diff so many different ways of knowing and ways of learning things. Um, we would lose access to entire people, entire cultures. We would lose so much access to, you know, a, a knowledge which really does define our contemporary world that you know, we do have information, so much information at our fingertips, and a lot of that is thanks to translation. Um, but also, we would lose so many different things. Like, what about the translation of thought into words? How would we, would we have any books at all if we lost translation? Because how would you learn to translate ideas and images from your mind into the written words? How would you translate um, what somebody is doing into an emotion or a feeling for you? How would you translate and understand those sort of um, key parts of human empathy? Translation doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, the translation of words. I think translation is something that is really at risk at the moment in kind of its definition. It's something that is developing and we're learning that translation actually there are so many different ways of translating so many different things and so many different ideas and methods and stuff with the translation of languages. You're not just translating words, you are translating meanings and emotions and cultural heritages. There's, it's just so, so filled with so many different things. So the book that I've kind of aligned this thing with is Green Mountain, White Cloud by Francois Cheng. Now this was, um, this is a book translated from French, the sort of author is Chinese. He spoke only Chinese and then he went to study in France and ended up um, staying in France and living in France. Um, and he, he, I, I did read that with him, um, he sort of began to think in French. He had lived there for so long that he had sort of stopped thinking in Chinese and started thinking in French and it felt only natural to then write in French, um, especially after he had written so many academic theses and everything in French. This book also kind of deals with that translation. It's a book that is has a story within a story. It's set in a sort of medieval abbey in France, in a room that is filled with all these ancient Chinese texts and then the narrator kind of discovers them and there's one in particular that I think he starts reading and he starts obviously I guess translating um, and it's it's like about a romance it's set in the Ming dynasty in China and it just kind of sounds absolutely intriguing and it sounds really wonderful and I think you know it'll be wonderful to see Cheng's experience of sort of moving from China into France and seeing a Chinese culture from a French perspective as his thoughts start becoming more and more French and his ideas start becoming more and more French. Um, so without translation, we wouldn't be able to have explorations of the extent of translation through literature. We, there'd be so many books that wouldn't, wouldn't be able to be read by us. <laughs> if 
we lost thought? What would happen if we lost thought from the world? The ability to think, to form sentient ideas and then to be able to express them through language, to be able to talk about them. Um, you know, what would it mean for humans if we did simply lose this ability to become emotional beings, to express our emotions through speech and to be able to um, contact each other and be in touch constantly and have and share our thoughts and ideas what if we were just simply like other animals across the world you know without our understanding of um, a sort of sentient intelligence you know of course animals do have their own ways of communicating animals do have their own ways of being and of living um, but they obviously haven't developed in the same way that we have so what if we did lose that from the world would we do the things that we do to the world? Do, will we subject it to such atrocities? Will we subject each other to such atrocities? Will we, will we be kinder to each other? Will we be able to be kinder to each other? You know, how would the world be different without humans having our thoughts the way that we do? Um, and I kind of wanted to look at 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. Now this book um, is about two Greek gods who, as part of a bet, decide to give a group of dogs human sentience and kind of it just follows these 15 dogs as they live their lives with this intelligence and the way that that affects them. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting. It kind of sounds absolutely hilarious and it kind of sounds really thought-provoking at the same time as these dogs become poets and become philosophers and sort of develop these tendencies that we as humans have and sort of begin to understand the terrors of the world or the horrors of the world, at least that's what it sounds like. I'm excited to see what happens to these dogs when they do get thoughts, to kind of see the opposite of what the world would be like for us without these thoughts, um, to kind of see the processes that these dogs go through and then the final outcomes as to how, how they've managed to cope um, and then to kind of think almost de-evolutionary, how we would learn to cope without the intelligence or whether the world would actually be better off without, without us um, being the way that we are. It's something worth thinking about, especially at a time when, you know, there are academics who believe that we are producing the end of the Anthropocene and whether we really are destroying ourselves as humans and how we should learn to connect with the natural world, both animals and plants and other things that are living, what would happen then if we actually became a little bit more humble with our ability to think and came a little bit more truer to our natural selves? So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it makes you think about what the world would be like if some of your favourite things disappeared from it. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.